David, my head wasn't working. That's because we're not on a campsite. You have to be plugged into the electric to use the hairdryer. If you'd like to know what you can and can't power when you're not on a campsite plugged in, if you'd like to know how the gas works, and if you'd like to know how our toilet works, then this is the video for you. This video features everything that we wish we knew when we first got the camper van. We're also going to feature our must-haves for van life. And as we're the Doolittles, we do like to entertain you guys. So there might be some cheesy adverts thrown in. So one of the first things I knew nothing about and wish I knew about when we first got the camper van was camper van electrics. I just assumed that in a camper van you'd have a big battery and you'd be able to plug everything in like a hairdryer, kettle, that sort of thing. As you can see from Claire's earlier clip, that's not quite the case. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try and explain our electrics to you and show you what we can and can't use um, and what options we've got. So here you see our control panel at the back. This controls all of our electrics. Now with the electric panels on uh, most camper vans, you've got two options with the batteries. You've got the vehicle battery, and you've also got the leisure battery. Obviously toggling that button um, toggles what, the, what is powering the actual camper van itself. You see as I've turned it on now, we're registering 14.1. I don't really know how good that is or how that, how good that's not, but that's um, registering the quality of the charge of our battery. Um, it's sitting around the 14 mark because we've actually got solar. Um, so the solar is currently charging the battery on the roof. Now essentially what you can power from the battery is you've got your lights, as you can see from the switch there. In actual fact, if I switch that one on, you should just see that it gets lighter. Turn it back off again. Um, you've got your water pump and your auxiliary is the flush on the toilet, the light on the oven um, and also anything that's USB powered. So you see there we've actually got some lights that are powered into the USB and I'll just turn them on so that you get an idea of what we do with those. Next to that, you've obviously got your um, plug sockets. Now these are only powered by 240 volt electricity. So you can only use those when you are on a campsite. So when we're on a campsite, there'll be a big pillar on each of the pitches. On that pillar, there'll be a socket similar to this, similar to the inside of this, should I say. We've got a cable that connects from our van and into this that then powers us and gives us electricity. If we're at home and we want electricity in the van, this is able to adapt the cable that we've got. So instead of plugging the cable straight into a fitting like that at the campsite, you plug the cable into this and then you can then plug that into your home. That again will provide you with 240 volt electricity. That means that you can then power anything via the three pin plugs that are on board. There are three ways to charge the batteries on board this van. So one of them is by driving because the alternator charges both the vehicle battery and then in turn it charges the leisure battery. You can also plug it in on a campsite as I spoke about a second ago. And the final way is we've got solar power. And in truth, we are very well kitted out for off grid. So we go for lots of days out and we use the lighting, um, we use the power sockets, the uh, USB sockets that is, um, and we've never run out of battery. The other thing that you can run off of the battery, and again, we were worried this may have caused us to uh, run out of battery, but that's the fridge. Um, I'll come onto the fridge later, but just so you know, the fridge also runs off of the leisure battery. So similar to the cigarette lighter in a car, we have a 12 volt socket in our van by the television. Now you'll see there, 
Many of you must know uh, this type of fitting. You get them on phone chargers, things like that. So yeah, anything that you would have a fitting like this on, and we've got one for the television, you can plug in there, and this will remain active all the time that the battery is active. If you have small appliances, such as table lamps or chargers for laptops that have got a three pin plug, you can still use the vehicle's leisure battery by using an inverter like this. Now, as you can see, the inverter has got three pin plug to it. So this plugs into the 12 volt socket that I showed you a minute ago, and you can then plug any normal plug into it. You can only plug small appliances into this. Something like a kettle would use far too much electricity. But this is the plug for our coloured lights at the back. So I'll just show you when I plug this in, you should see the back of the van light up. Do you ever worry about dropping your towel on the way back from the shower block? Do you worry about dropping everything on the way back from the shower block? Then the Gizo microfiber robe could be what you're looking for. The Gizo gets you dry in record time and I've got pockets for everything else. One of the other things we need to be on a campsite for is our hot water. The reason being, there's various different ways of having a water heater on a camper van. Some people use gas, others use diesel. Ours uses 240 volt electric, so we must be connected in order to heat the water up. The water does retain its heat, um, and it will retain it for about three to four hours, so we can go out for the day and still have hot water for the washing up. Now where our tank is, is our tank's actually under one of the seats in the back and I'll just show you how you can get to that. So you just lift the seat up and as you can see we've got the water tank under there, here. Now at the back you've got your plug um, and obviously you've got your switch. Now it's important when uh, when you've not got any water in there because you've drained it down for winter, it is important to make sure that switch is turned off because otherwise you'll burn the element out. Likewise, it's also important to drain the system down in the winter because if you've got water in there and it expands because it turns into ice, that will then um, obviously damage the insides of it because it can only take so much water and as the ice expands, it will burst the tank. Are you sick and tired of the washing up constantly falling off the side when you leave it out and you drive off? You need the Umbra dish drying rack. The microfiber cloth absorbs all of the moisture from anything you may have washed up. It's anti-slip so you can leave things on there whilst you drive. And there is a rack for plates. Again, these can withstand corners taken by David Loader. Okay, so we don't currently have water on board, um, so I can't show you how the taps work, but I can explain. Um, you've got the tap on top, you've got cold that side, you've got hot that side. You pull the tap up, and what that'll do is that'll engage the pump. So you do need to use the leisure battery to power the pumps. You need to make sure you've got a charged battery. That then pulls the water through the system. When you fill up the tank for the first time for the season, there will obviously be no water in the hot water tank. In order to rectify this, you need to set the tap to open on hot and you need to run the water through until it comes out the tap. Because what that will do is it will pull it from the cold tank into the hot tank, then into the pipes, which then come out the tap. What we're going to do now is we're going to do some washing up because we've got bottled water on board and we'll show you what happens to our wastewater. So that's the washing up done and I'm going to pull the plug and then Claire will show you where the water goes to outside. We've got a collapsible bucket to collect our drainage. Do you ever struggle to find somewhere to store your hose? David, I can't find anywhere to store the hose. The collapse foldable pipe might work well for you.
simply hang over your tap and tighten the strap. Expand the tube and insert into the motorhome. Hang on, there's no water coming out of here. Oh yeah, don't forget to turn your tap on. Ugh. Okay, so gas and cooking. So essentially our gas comes from a small camping gas canister. I say small, it's actually the biggest camping gas canister you can get. That powers the fridge, the oven, the hob, uh, and the grill. Now you've got a couple of isolating valves there so we can isolate any one of those um, from down in the cupboard. One thing it's important to note, note is that you cannot drive with this switched on so the gas must always be turned off on top of the bottle. The other thing is you've got your vent down there so should we ever have a gas leak the gas will sink out down and out of the vehicle um, without poisoning us. So then obviously just moving up, we've got our oven. You've got your light there, um, which switches on with the electric of the vehicle. You've then got, uh, you can either turn it to grill or you can turn it on to, uh, to one of the oven functions. And then you power it by gas. You've got an ignition switch there, which is also powered by the vehicle battery. Just moving up to the top, you've obviously got your hobs. Oh. Um, up to the hobs, you've got one on the left, one on the right, one slightly bigger than the other one. Again, you've got an ignition switch that's down at the bottom um, and you can just obviously turn that on, get the gas flowing through and switch it on. The other thing that we've got powered by gas is our fridge, which we'll show you in a minute. Are you tired of constantly scrubbing the frying pan and struggling to get it clean? It just won't come off. Do you ever find that you can't find the cooking utensils? Where's the spatula? Why haven't I got a spatula in here? You may well want to buy yourself a Ridge Monkey. Its unique design houses the utensils inside. It wipes clean instantly with no scrubbing. So our fridge is a Dometic three-way fridge. Um, what you can see is you've got a knob there that actually controls what powers the fridge. So we can power it by electricity when we're on a campsite. We can power it by leisure battery, um, but that will only last for a few hours. So that's a real emergency. Um, although you can power it using that whilst you're driving because obviously the battery's recharging itself. And then you've got gas at the bottom. Um, so in the back you've got a heater that seems strange that you've got a heater that powers a fridge but I'm not up on science um, but yeah the heater will then power the fridge and it will cool it down um, and then that's the inside of our fridge you can see we've got a nice little snack there for later and we've also got an ice box so the ice box works very similar to a freezer um, but what you'll find is it won't keep things very well frozen so it's not really uh, you know, it's not really something we'd use too much. That's a fridge. Do you ever find yourself constantly going to the supermarket to pick up essentials while you're out and about in the van? David, can we stop at Tesco's? We need snacks. Like that. Worried about using shopping baskets in the current COVID climate? If the answer's yes, then the collapsible insulated picnic basket is what you need. So the other thing I really wanted to understand when we got the camper van is how the toilets work. And I'm gonna show you how ours does. So from the top, you'll see that it looks like just a standard toilet. Maybe a bit more of a Japanese one because it looks electric, but this one doesn't wash your bottom. Um, so in order to use it, you basically just open it up and then you've got the flush there. You've got your waste tank is underneath this and it's accessed from the back, which I'll show you in a minute. And you've got your flush tank, which is separate and that's filled from the back too. Again, we'll show you that in a second. And that is basically the toilet. One thing to note is you do have to have your electric on because the flush is powered by the battery. You open the flap up. You should do that before you go to the toilet because otherwise what you do comes between the toilet and the seal and it can be a real mess when you empty it. 
The other thing is, if you close it afterwards, you'll avoid getting any nasty smells in the van. And the toilet itself empties from the back. So it opens there and you pull the toilet out. You can then take it away and you can dump it wherever you need to be. You see you've got wheels at the bottom to wheel it. The flush itself is filled through this pipe. So you fill that with your pink fluid and some water, mix it all together, and that will then flush the toilet. Well, we hope you enjoyed that, guys. We certainly enjoyed it, and we definitely enjoyed doing some of those adverts, didn't we? Yeah, <laughs> just a bit of fun. Obviously, we're not endorsed by anyone, we're just doing it for a bit of fun, and we're rec recommending a few things that we like in our van and we like to use. Yeah, and we just thought, hopefully, the little cheesiness would make you laugh. <laughs> now, I think Claire's got one last thing that <laughs> she would say we, can't, we couldn't do without when it comes to the camper van. Absolutely. Our top, top must-have is a cockapoo. Come up here. This is our little <laughs> cockapoo, as you know. <laughs> She's an absolutely essential for any van life. She just makes it so special, doesn't she? She does. We love going away, but she loves exploring. It's all good. She's just had a bath, that's why she's yeah. wet. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll show you why we think she's the must-have. So we're going to leave you now with a few snippets of Tessie and her adventures. Thanks for watching. See you See soon. You soon. <laughs>